When I was growing up, my parents told me that I could do anything I wanted to and be anyone I wanted to as long as I worked hard and focused. What they didn't tell me was that there would be people along the way who said, you can't do it. And so, it can't be done is the title of this talk because it served as a motivation and an inspiration for innovation and invention. So in 2003, this may look familiar to some of you, uh, hanging Chaz and pregnant Chaz changed the future of voting in the United States of America in my home state of Florida. And this was an issue because in our country, people have literally died for the right to vote. It's one of these things that's true to our democracy. So when we have an incident where people are not given that right, it's, it's severe for our particular country. So as a result of that, Congress appropriated funds, billions of dollars, for the Help America Vote Act. Now, HAVA was allocating funds to states to go out and actually uh, improve voting by purchasing new equipment. And part of HAVA required that every voting place had an accessible voting machine meaning one that was provided for people with disabilities. We'll talk more about that in a second. Now these machines that were being purchased had flaws. Uh, there were demonstrations of people hacking them. Uh, they had all these security issues. And then there were some severe usability issues. And voting is not a simple thing, uh, as you'll see in a second. So in 2003, uh, this is my team. We were at a conference and there was a speaker talking about voting and technology. And the speaker, uh, the keynote speaker stood up and said, well, we can't use computers in voting. This will not work. It can't be done. It'll be hacked. It's not safe. And after the talk, my team pulled me aside and they said, well, they look very discouraged. And they said, I said, what's, what's the matter? What happened? I said, well, this person was standing up there saying it couldn't be done, and we're getting PhDs, and we thought we were the people who were supposed to fix things. So at that moment, I'm at a crossroad. You know, I'm on a fork in the road. What do I do? So I said to them, you're right. That's who we are, and that's what we should be doing. And in fact, if you guys are serious about this, let's go back to the lab and do something about it. So we went back to the lab and we discovered some challenges in order to do something about this. And that's why it probably hadn't been done because it wasn't easy. So the first thing is security. If I'm going to design a new voting technology, it has to be secure. In other words, can it be hacked? Can someone change the outcome of the election undetected? Next, it has to be usable. Voting has to be usable for everyone. Any citizen with the right to vote, has to be usable, has to be accessible. It's the law, meaning people with disabilities should have access. That's the law. Now, in our mind, when we saw the Help America Vote Act, HAVA said one machine in every precinct. We didn't think that would work because that pr created a separate but equal experience. And that hasn't worked too well in the United States. <laughs> so we decided was what if we do a universal design, meaning you design once and everybody votes on the same machine. And at that time in 2003, people thought this could not be done. So it's a challenge because imagine if I'm a blind person and I want to vote, I could listen to the ballot and I could use buttons or something to go next, back, and select. Or if I'm deaf, I could look at the screen and touch it. But what happens if the person doesn't have arms? Now, how does that person vote? So we came up with these ideas. We said, we'll do something about this. But our goal was to create a secure, usable, accessible design and it all in one machine so everyone has the same experience. So with that, we created a voting technology we called it Prime 3, Premier Third Generation Voting Technology. So Prime 3 allows you to vote by touch. It's a touch screen interface. And you have a headset with a microphone, as you can see one of my students at the time. And you can speak to it. Now, you don't say, 
vote for Barack Obama, it would say you are now voting for the office of president and to vote for Barack Obama, say vote. And you simply respond vote. So if I'm eavesdropping on you, I have no idea who you're voting for. So it retains privacy. So at the time when we created Prime 3, we didn't know it, but we had invented the world's most accessible voting technology. <clears throat> Meaning people that couldn't see, can't hear, people that can't read, even people without arms could all privately and independently vote on the same machine as anyone else. So being researchers, we put this machine together, we created it in 2003. The next step, we wanted to test it. So we went to the Alabama Institute for the Deaf and Blind. And so this is the team that went with me. We went there, we set up in an auditorium. Here's a picture of the setup, and you see a, a young lady there who's blind, who was voting, and she's holding the headset. And what we noticed was that we had an unexpected event. It was loud. And that noise interfered with the speech recognition. So my team was a little discouraged by that, but there was this one woman, she was blind, and she came back multiple times to vote. And we said, so you're struggling with this. Why do you keep coming back? She said, this is the first time in my life I've ever been able to vote by myself. That changed everything for us. Immediately, we knew we were on to something. Although we had this issue, but we knew we were on to something. So what we decided to do, we actually fixed the issue. It was an interesting approach. So what we were doing was speech recognition, trying to recognize the person saying vote and background noise and things interfered. So we changed it from speech recognition to sound detection. In other words, the application would listen all the time, and if it was noisy, sensitivity would go down. And at the time it said to vote for Barack Obama, say vote, it actually, because the mic was close to your mouth, when you say vote, it spikes. So then we could get a hit at that point. So we made the modifications, and we kept going. Now, at that point, we're doing more research and development. And so we want to get funding. We submitted proposals to the National Science Foundation, several proposals, and they all were rejected. The first one, they said, well, you got to talk more about security. The next one, you got to talk more about usability. You got to talk about this. So we went through this period of rejection. Then it was this voting competition for our students to build voting systems. We went there, and we lost. Uh, my team was discouraged, but we knew we should have won, but we lost. No one believed in the work we were doing, and at the time, they said it couldn't be done. Remember, conventional wisdom was you had to have a separate machine for people with disabilities. You can't build one that everyone can use. So we were probably at one of our lowest points, and then we get a call from the National Science Foundation saying, one of the program managers there, he called me up, he said, Juan, you know what? I know you've been rejected by us, but I believe in what you're doing. So I'm gonna give you a small grant for exploratory research. And everything changed at that moment. So we had some funding to start this. Uh, we got media coverage. As you can see, Dan Rather came to visit us. Uh, I had the opportunity to testify before Congress. And then in 2011, the United States Election Assistance Commission had a program for accessible voting technologies. We applied and we got $4.5 million to finish the research. So there were a lot of positive things that happened uh, at that point. So we kept doing our research, our development, we said, let's go out and do some, some testing. We actually did elections with student organizations. The National Society of Black Engineers is the nation's largest student-run organization. They've been using Prime 3 since 2008. We went to disability organizations, uh, National Council of Independent Living, and several others, and tested with Prime 3. Uh, then in 2012, in the presidential primary, the state of Oregon, said, we want to test it. So we went out, I think, in five different precincts, and we did testing there. They actually took Prime 3 to independent uh, living centers and rehab centers and let people vote on it. 
So we were getting some experience, and then in 2012, something very interesting happened. I got a call from Self Advocates Becoming Empowered, SAVE. So an organization that represents people with cognitive disabilities. They said, we heard about the work you're doing, we would love for you to come, and we want to test, do our national election with your technology. So at that moment in time, we realized when we go there, there are going to be people all over the reading literacy scale. So what do we do? We've got to make sure they can vote. But we don't want to ask them about their reading literacy or reading capability. So we put pictures of the candidates on the ballot. They used Prime 3, and we had no problems. We couldn't tell if a person could read or not. So we had the idea that maybe this system really does work in the sense that people who can't read can actually use it. This is 2012, presidential election. This was in October. So the week before the actual election day, we went to Clemson Elementary School and did a mock election with pre-K to sixth graders. So we knew some of them could not read. No question. <laughs> We had them do the mock election. They followed through. They did it. We got the results. Uh, they had voted for President Obama. We did a newspaper article about it. The parents protested and said, do a recount. It can't be. My kid would never vote for him. <laughs> and then on Tuesday, he won. So the kids had predicted the president. So we had done all this test, these tests. We also did an election in 2014 in Wisconsin. And to date, to my knowledge, Prime 3 is the most tested voting system ever with respect to demographic diversity. Everyone had voted on this. Every age, demographic, we traveled the whole country. Now, in 2014, that was a special year. We did Wisconsin in April, but then New Hampshire came on board. So New Hampshire, we did, as you can see here, the primary election in September. They loved it. They said, okay, we want you back for the midterm in November. So you can see the setup here where they, New Hampshire brought a touch screen, a little tablet device. They had a printer that printed the ballot. They had the headset with the microphone. And they had a two button switch where you hit one side is next, the other side is select. So New Hampshire happened, and that went very well. Now, the next thing we noticed, there was a shift in the industry. The voting machine manufacturers, the vendors, have all created universally designed technology. Interesting. <laughs> LA County and Travis County, which is Austin, Texas, are working on developing open source or voting technologies as well. In 2012, there were long lines in voting. Some of you probably read about that. And President Obama put together a commission on election administration, and they recommended that we should do more work with COTS or commercial off-the-shelf components in elections so you can go buy things and not necessarily from a vendor. One of the motivations for that was the Help America Vote Act money is running, it's gone. There's no new money. So the equipment that was purchased is outdated. So they were saying, let's experiment with off-the-shelf kind of things. All these things we have done over a decade ago. That's how far ahead we were of the curve. So they said it can't be done. We were told that uh, it can't be done, but we did it. We dared to defy it. Prime 3 will be released as open source in September. <laughs> Election officials will have access to this. Um, so what's my prediction? There will be a disruption in the voting market comes October after this is released. New Hampshire is going statewide. We're working with them now with Prime 3. And they're the first, one of the first early next year. So that's going to be exciting for me, but my team is pretty nervous right now. <laughs> and then, if you look at it, what did we do? We have changed voting. Voting in the United States of America, everyone will vote in the future on a technology we either created or inspire, one way or another. So here's my team. These students, they all have PhDs except one. The young man on the right in the blue, Jerome McClendon. He just got his PhD at Clemson University, and Jerome's master thesis incorporated a barcode technology in voting. 
four or five years later, a major voting manufacturer was going to try and patent that technique, but we were able to block it because we had prior art four years in advance of anyone even thinking about it. it it was a change in the market, literally, because other manufacturers were intimidated by the fact that the biggest one was trying to get this patent. But what I really want to focus on is Shanae Dawkins. So Shanae got her PhD with me when I was at Auburn. And Shanae worked on a piece of Prime 3. She is now a research scientist at NIST, National Institutes for Standards and Technology. So what Shanae worked on was a very hard problem. So when you vote, you have the right to write in a candidate, right? How do you write in a candidate if you don't have arms? It's very tricky. So I can't just say the name, and I can't spell the name. So she created an approach that allowed people, we divided the alphabet up in five letters, and she had a way that allows people to spell anonymously. So I could eavesdrop on you, and I wouldn't know. All I would hear you say is vote or blow into a microphone. And we studied that, and it was more effective than actually spelling linearly. So that technique was implemented. We published that. And that was part of the work we've done, a contribution. And that's implemented in Prime 3. So effectively, we have changed the world, and people will vote on this technology. We were told it couldn't be done, but we defied that and persist, and we did it. Thank you.